Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Magic the Gathering single prices and how they continue to decline. Uh, Magic the Gathering is doing very poorly, even the reserve list is in mass decline. I have looked at different prices on eBay, Complete, and so on, but in my idea, a buy list, especially one where quantities are very high, is the liquidation that everyone talks about, or I guess no one talks about. And Magic the Gathering uh, is, in my opinion, no longer investable. It is a toxic asset, uh, even the top cards. Now, I will get a lot of people who don't like that. Uh, those people often own a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. But as somebody who owns a lot myself, I can tell you that I, I've been approached with many, many amazing deals. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, maybe another time, another date, maybe when I was younger, I could justify spending this type of money and, hey, maybe this thing goes up in price again. But as you get older and you get a little wiser, you just understand that this is a item that is not as liquid as you need it to be. And when the time comes, when you do want to sell, there are no buyers. So that's where I am right now. I'm blessed that I have a successful business. We make good money. I'm blessed that I have good workers. I have a very simple you know, not extravagant life, but really nice life. And the last thing I need to do is uh, spend money on more cardboard. I'm not the only one that feels this way. I think a lot of people are going to view this video as negativity to magic. No, I'm always going to enjoy my collection. I'm always going to enjoy having a collection like this. I'm always going to enjoy being able to look at my dual lands and so on. I'm a collector. First and foremost, I'm a collector. And a lot of what I love collecting is here. It's magic cards. I love the old artwork. I love the Teresa Nielsen Force of Wills, even though they're not worth a lot of money now. And in many aspects, it's kind of great that like these cards are cheap and affordable to a younger generation should they want to play magic. I'm very skeptical as to the longevity of this game. I will be the first one to tell you that I don't think this game is, I do not think this game has as long as most people think it has. I think the management is very bad. Uh, I think a lot of the cards are just Anything that can be reprinted will be reprinted in a better format. And I mean, they're just running out of reprint equity. There's nothing left. Um, any card of any value is just going to be reprinted in a collector's edition box and sold for a ton of money. This is not something, you know, I had a, I had a game store and we were do, buying two, three thousand, four thousand dollars of magic blisters a month. And that just sat there, you know, no one really wanted them. The Pokemon blisters, they're gone. I saved some for me and my girlfriend to open. Um, but the Magic blisters, I mean, you couldn't sell them. Like, this type of stuff, like, you can't sell. Like, I mean, name a recent box five years ago, five from five years to now, that actually has any, even War of the Spark has no demand for it. And the box price is not even, the box price is 110 on Dave and Adams. The MSRP is 140 and what local game stores were selling at the time was about 110 given its popularity. Meaning that over the X amount of years, it just hasn't gone up. Return to Ravnica is buy listing for like $70. But anyway, let me talk about collections and singles. If you have some money, it's not the worst idea, in my opinion. Might be a good gamble. Um, I think that there is some truth. I think there is some. <laughs> I mean, God, I'm, I'm just like old now. But if I was younger and I was more into risk, I would buy some of the collections that came. I get emailed between five to ten collections a week. And these collections 
like I mentioned, they now have alpha and beta cards in them. They have unlimited cards. They're pretty stellar collection. Now the price point is not right. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, whatever you can say about that, the price is not right. The price is not right. Um, if the price is not right, you can't buy it no matter how much you want the collection. And as you get older, as money becomes money is money is tight right now for a lot of people, paycheck by paycheck. Would you rather have a nice vacation or would you rather have a moat? I take the vacation now. When I was younger, maybe I take the moat. I think that's the decision a lot of older people are making right now is that um, many of these cards are just so astronomically, they're just cardboard, right? And if they're not going to, if, if they're not an investment and you don't play with them, then what are they? You know, what are they? <laughs> Uh, there's so much better things you can do with your money. When when you talk about single cards and reserve list cards, and these are supposed to be the cards that these, this is supposed to be real estate. It's supposed to be top tier shit, right? But it's not. And, and the one problem, the problem that it always comes back to is liquidity. That's the problem. If you have a large magic collection, the amount of people willing to buy it is decreasing at a price that you feel good. I used to pay 70, 80, 90% for collections retail because that's how I felt about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even pay 40% now because I, I don't want it. I already have everything that I would ever want. And having, you know, instead of 400 dual lands, having 410 dual lands isn't really attractive to me. It's simply not, and I wish it was different. I wish I could say, like, hey, magic to the moon, but it's maybe maybe one day. Uh, I think management needs to change. I think there's a lot of things that I would want to see changed. Uh, primarily speaking, I, I think management where Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams is horrendous right now. I don't trust them, and you should not either. I think in terms of where people are and in their investment journey, Liquidity. It's all about liquidity. One thing, it is all about liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. And if you can't liquid, if, if your co collection um, is not able to be sold, then it's worthless. Until you sell your collection, you're in on it. There's no money. And I look at these cards and every time somebody doesn't sell it, it goes lower. It's a very depressing cycle and... Maybe I just throw it in storage and then uh, 10 years and see what happens. See if the game is still kicking. But I'm definitely not in the market. Like, I'm in the market to buy cards. Don't get me wrong. I'm just buying more cards than I ever bought. I actually uh, have this big Pokemon deal going down. A girlfriend loves opening new Pokemon packs. Uh, we play Pokemon Go most weekends, so we love opening packs. We are doing Disney Locana. We're doing One Piece. I mean, we're having a blast with these card games, just playing with each other. Her nephew is really into Yu-Gi-Oh! And he's kind of into magic. So, I mean, it's interesting. But, um, yeah, as an investment, this is a hard no pass for me. Anyway, bye guys.